So without further ado, Representative, uh, State Representative Jim Rundstedt. Thank you, Jim. Okay, well, thank you for uh, for coming this uh, evening, and uh, I really want to uh, recognize uh, the representative from this area, State Representative Jeff Noble, is here. It's also my understanding we have a few judges in the uh, audience, and if uh, they want to stand and be recognized, we want to welcome the judges if they uh, so wish. Um, or not. Um, so with that, uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see uh, really well the PowerPoint that we have here, but um, I will be reading from it so you will, uh, you'll, you'll get uh, all of the uh, text off of the uh, PowerPoint. We uh, put this, uh, tech, this uh, PowerPoint together trying to provide uh, background information about where the current system is now and uh, then what we're looking at in terms of changes. I do want to emphasize a couple of things tonight. One is uh, that uh, we want to be respectful of everyone and everyone's opinion. Um, also, uh, if there are changes that individuals have pertaining to this bill, we are completely open to additional changes. The one thing we're not open to is continuing a default system where basically you pit the parents of one against the other to determine who's the best. One is going to end up with vastly less time, one's going to end up more time. But anybody that believes that having both parents involved as much as possible with their children that has suggestions, we are all ears to that. So to begin, uh, we are facing a societal crisis uh, here in the country, a lot of what, which has to do with the fatherless families. Uh, we're experiencing a seismic generational shift with over uh, 610,000 uh, Michigan children who live in a uh, household with no male presence at all, according to latest census figures. Uh, kids win when separated parents have equal rights and responsibilities. Uh, this is uh, Diana Thompson in the Gazette. 40% of the children living in fatherless homes haven't seen their father in over a year. 26% uh, of absent fathers live in different states than their children. According to Census Bureau, 82.2% of custodial parents are mothers and 17.8% are fathers. There's a common myth, stripping physical custody of divorcing parents is a relic of an bygone era. That is what so many people believe that aren't familiar with the statistics, but that is simply not the case, it's continuing. The reality is Michigan family courts strip physical custody from a parent in over half of all divorce cases. That is the reality. Michigan courts are routinely stripping good parents of physical custody of their children because they weren't deemed the best parent without any finding a fact of insufficient parenting. So this is a parent who was found to be insufficient, but in this current adversarial system, they weigh the two parents, one will win and one will lose in the majority of the cases. A justice isn't uniform. There is a significant problem in some courtrooms and there's a lack of consistency and predictability across the family court system. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. A parent's likelihood of being awarded joint custody has little relationship to do with their parenting skills, but rather it is a function of where they live and which judge they are assigned. The same fact pattern can yield wildly different outcomes depending on which judicial district and which judge hears the case. This undermines public confidence that judicial decisions uh, are made consistently and even-handedly. These are statistics that we got from the Health and Human Services Department. Uh, now they had to come from the court system. There's been a lot of debate about you know, where do these statistics come from. Um, we tried very, very hard to get these statistics over the last two years and we were told, well, they don't have it, they don't have it. A employee who was leaving the system provided this on the way out and that's where we got these statistics. I've asked for the 2015 statistics uh, from the liaison to scale, that's uh, uh, 
the part of the court system that has this information and still have not received it. So we have from 2008 and then we have from 15 uh, in terms of this data. Unfortunately, in 2008, there was a senator over on the west side of the state that worked with the courts to eliminate the printing of this data for the legislature. Actually, a bill went through to eliminate data for uh, the legislature. And uh, that has made it very, very difficult to get this information. Across the country, all kinds of individuals are interested in this kind of data because it's the data that drives these decisions. Hiding the data, not revealing the data, makes it very difficult to make any kind of legislative changes anywhere within the system, not just the courts, but anywhere. So here we have, uh, in Michigan, the percent of joint physical custody by county, and as you can see, they range all over the place. At the bottom are the various counties listed. The percent of cases where counties order joint physical custody ranged from 14% to over 70%. So there's a huge disparity depending on where your case is. This is in Michigan, maternity physical custody by county 2013. Uh, maternal uh, physical custody orders by county ranged from 18 to 69%, depending on the county. And here is uh, paternal physical custody by county. They range from three to 17% across the state of Michigan. As you can see, the bottom line there is paternity custody. It, it isn't much impacted by the joint custody rulings. Uh, maternity uh, custody, you can see it is a direct correlation. Um, as mothers are awarded sole custody um, versus joint custody, there's a direct correlation on that number. Comparing counties of similar size really does raise the questions because if you have a similar county, similar demographics, you should have a similar outcome, and that's simply not the case. Uh, a couple of examples, St. Clair County uh, awards uh, uh, mother custody 43.6%, Calhoun, similar size, 64%. Uh, St. Clair, joint custody, 49.7%, almost 50%, Calhoun, 28.9%. Uh, in Berrien and Bay, a comparison, Berrien um, uh, maternal custody is 51.4, in Bay 31.4, joint custody in Berrien 35.1, Bay 57.1. And the biggest disparity of similar counties is Van Buren and Montcalm. In Van Buren, father custody is 6.7, Montcalm 15.4. In Van Buren, mother custody is 36.2, Montcalm 66.4. And you can really see the differential here in Van Buren. 51.7% of all cases are joint custody. In Montcalm, similar size county, 16.1%. So you can see when we hear, no, no, these are very individualized decisions. We, take our time very cautiously and carefully making these decisions. If that were the case, you wouldn't have a gigantic disparity within these counties. Uh, why is there such an extreme variation? Michigan legislators have not set clear objective child custody standards for over 50 years. Individual judges use personal preferences often to determine courtroom practices. Family court uses a myriad of conflicting appellate court rulings to justify inconsistent actions from courtroom to courtroom. Antiquated Child Custody Act of 1970. The physical custody of children is largely awarded to the parent who spent the most time with their children during the divorce. It's called the Established Custodial Environment Principle. And I've talked to attorneys all over the state that say, yeah, when I get a client, I say, well, Who's working the most hours between you and the spouse? Ooh, geez, you're working 60 hours and they're working part-time at 20. Uh, no, it looks like you're, you're gonna get the short end of the stick in terms of the children. Uh, that is why I hear more than any other comment in terms of how these decisions are made. There's 12 best interest factors, but I've yet to met an attorney that say they're equal, that all of these 12 best interest factors are equal. I'll hear maybe three or four are very, very important. Uh, and one of them is that, uh, who spends, spends most time with the children. Uh, the problem and impacts of using a 50-year-old established custodial environment principle, common 
uh, assumptions are that the parent who cooked the most meals or spent the most time with the child is an acceptable proxy for who is the best parent. Children are best, uh, number two, children are best served by primarily being raised by one parent while the other parent is spending uh, every other weekend uh, with the children. This is the paradigm uh, that uh, the uh, current system uh, operates under in the majority of cases. Fails to recognize and fully value the unique and beneficial contributions each parent brings to the child's development. Stay at home and part-time working parents almost always become uh, the custodial parents in contested cases. Courts routinely ignore the parent-child relationships, positive influences of kids being raised by working parents, shared hobbies, interests, or the need for gender balance, the benefits of shared responsibility, or other critical factors when making these child uh, custody determinations. There's a family court bias in, uh, against parents from families with a traditional division of labor. Although household responsibilities are essential, tasks like cooking, meals, driving the kids to school take precedence over in the established custodial environment standard over a parent who is the predominant bread earner or, for instance, mow the lawn is an example. The newly established uh, households, in the newly established households, both parents will be responsible for all tasks. The imbalance of parental responsibilities, um, nearly all the weight a child rearing falls on one parent under the current system. Uh, conflicting sporting events, school functions, homework, uh, grocery shopping, all default onto one parent. While the other parent uh, feels left out, unwanted, underutilized, rejected, unneeded, impacting the relationship between them and their children. Custod uh, established custodial environment, the foundation of the current system. There's a common myth that uh, keeps parents' arrangements as close to the way they were before the divorce. I hear that all the time. What we need to do is be concerned about the children. What the children need is the continuity that they were used to. And the current system provides that. Oh, it does not. Uh, currently, uh, with most of the families going through a, a divorce situation, the children have access to both parents. That's what we're trying to replicate, is keeping that continuity, keeping that emotional support system for the children. The current system, in the majority of cases, does not do that. It, um, uh, it, it alters it radically. Um, the reality joint physical custody most closely approximates continuance of an intact nuclear family for minor children. Sole custody isolates children from one parent for all but four nights a month and every other holiday in the majority of cases. The sole physical custody magnifies the loss of a key contributor to the nuclear family for affected children. Non-essential parents become non-custodial uh, non parents, rather, uh, become non-essential parents in a 70-30 or quite often 80-20 split. Common practice, one parent is given secondary parenting role and alternating weekends, visitation, or parenting time. Non-custodial parents routinely go 10 days every two weeks without having a overnight with their children. This creates a striking contrast to the way things were in the marriage. But judges who disproportionately wore sole custody ignore this reality. When the children have access to mom and dad every night, that's the continuity. That is what they're used to. Altering that radically, like we do in the majority of the cases today, is not keeping the continuity for the children. So what we're talking about through all of this is the children and the best interest for the children. Yes, I hear constantly, this is about the parents. No, we're talking about the emotional well-being of the children. Non-custodial parents miss out on significant parts of their children's lives. Non-custodial parents frequently get alternating Friday-Saturday calendar, which means no overnights for their kids on school nights ever. Could you imagine if you're a parent in this room, a loving, caring parent, in your entire life, you never had a single overnight with your children? Uh, that, for me, is a very devastating thing for the children. Uh, the, the kids love to have that interaction. So here are some of the uh, statistics, some of the images that we pulled off of various websites. Uh, they were very easy to find. Uh, this is Ingham County in front of the court. Uh, reasonable rights of parenting time are currently defined as alternating weekends 
parenting time should occur on alternating weekends from 6 p.m. Friday to 6 p.m. Uh, Sunday evening. That is reasonable. When you go through a divorce, pr prior to that, this was never the arrangement for the majority of cases. But when you go through the divorce, they say, now this new paradigm is what is good for the kids. <clears throat> Next, we have uh, Calhoun County. Uh, their reasonable standard parenting time is alternate weekends from 6 p.m. on Friday to 6 p.m. on Saturday. That's the Cal to Calhoun County. That's the reasonable standard if you don't win the custody battle. And you can see why people who love their kids will do almost anything to fight and battle to stay in the life of those kids. The current system encourages that. You have a standard where it is going to be a case of the best who's considered the best wins in the majority of cases and who's just a little bit less than the best, they're going to be defaulted down to these every other weekend scenarios. Uh, here we have a Jackson a County. Reasonable rights of parenting time is defined by Jackson County Friend of the Court as every other weekend from Friday night, 6 o'clock, to Sunday night, 6 o'clock. Uh, here we have Wayne County. Um, their reasonable parenting time on alternate weekends defined as Friday 6 p.m., uh, Sunday 6 p.m. And you can go on and on and look these up by yourself, uh, county by county. Uh, I have heard comments that uh, friend of the courts may start pulling these off because it isn't the narrative that I hear. It's what we see is being posted, but it's not the narrative that I hear uh, from any within the system. Despite what some people will tell you, the statewide data clearly shows you the family courts still rule for sole custody more frequently than any other form of custody. And that four nights, overnights a month, and no school overnights is not an aberration. It is the standard in many counties for non-custodial parents. So in practical terms, this means a three-year-old child whose parents separate will spend 12 years with one parent three years with the other, a four to one ratio. And you can see why we have a system built as an adversarial system. One parent gets 12 years with the kids in those early formative years, the other three. And they are told, listen, you better pony up, you better dig deep. You better go to mom and dad for more money. You better go to grandma and grandpa, go aunts and uncles. This is the kids, this is the grandkids, the, the nieces, the nephews, the cousins. Fight, fight, fight. Don't end up in that, that three years. You've got to be up in the 12. That's the kind of system that we have currently today. The result, hundreds of thousands of Michigan children live within a few miles or a few minutes of their non-primary resident parent separated by a court order. The extreme act of limiting a child's access to one of their parents creates a high-stake environment which drives conflict and litigation. Research indicates that limiting a child's access to one of their fit and loving parents simply because the parent no longer resides, and his parents no longer reside together is unwarranted and harmful to children. Uh, we have, uh, going back to that, uh, I'm not sure if we have all of the studies that we provided yesterday, but there is 54 uh, national, globally, peer-reviewed studies showing that shared parenting is the best arrangement for children by the 110 of the leading experts on this issue. Uh, the 1970 Child Custody Act is a winner-take-all parent comparison contest. Michigan law does not create an objective standard by which a parent is deemed a suitable parent. Rather, the established custody environment standard and the best interest factors are set up as an adversarial competition between two parents to determine which is the best. There's virtually no ability to change primary custody once it is established. Judicial mistakes last an entire childhood. Stringent legal hurdles are recognized case law uh, allow little recognition of changes in circumstances as the children age unless those changes are very extreme. Excuse me, the uh, myth. A child is best served by being raised by their best parent. Now who determines this and how can you determine this with overloaded friend of the court vision and with a large caseload is gonna look at everyone in this room and they're gonna say, I think this one's a little better than that. And if they do, uh, then you're going to default 
in the majority of cases into that scenario uh, of that 80-20. Uh, the new principle we're talking about is a child's best interest is served by having a balance and being raised by two conscientious, loving, bio, uh, biological parents whenever possible. What do the experts say? The American Psychological Association peer-reviewed flagship journal, Psychology, Public Policy and the Law, recently published a paper on shared parenting endorsed by 110 of the world's leading experts in the area of child development and attachment. Shared parenting is supported by over 43, it's now 54, of peer-reviewed papers. The largest study of children ever conducted who have experienced a divorce and separation, over 150,000 participants concluded shared parenting yielded the best child well-being outcomes. So what we're talking about is the best outcome for children. What do we hear from the other side? Split the, the parents, the best interest for the parents. The studies are in, the science is in, this is the best arrangement for the children. Realizing that the par best parent for the child is both parents, 25 states are considering shared parenting bills uh, in this legislative se uh, session. Utah, Missouri, Arizona recently passed laws enabling children to spend more time with their fathers. I believe it's now five states uh, have that uh, uh, passed. Arizona lawyers now tell fathers uh, their of their children, they now have a 90% chance of being allowed 50-50 uh, parenting time. Reports have shown that uh, there is agreement. This law is working. Shared parenting, a paradigm shift to encourage both divorced parents to play significant roles in the lives of their children. 